In the book of Revelation 4 and 1, we see before the throne of God. We also see before the throne of God in the book of Revelation chapter 7, 14 through 17, those that came out of the great tribulation are before the throne. John makes it perfectly clear that before the throne of God is the temple of God, which we know by the book of Revelation 4 that also before the throne is the sea of glass. And I believe that that sea is the temple of God. And that's why we see in the new Jerusalem, there is no more sea because there is no more temple because we're the temple of God. The reality of heaven is greater than any description we have of it. And that's the truth. The times that I've seen it in vision, it has been amazing. The judgment of God are announced by the seven seals, the seven scrolls. Something made me think about those scrolls, and I'm working on those scrolls. I'm trying to establish by the power of the Holy Spirit that these seven seals, these seven scrolls, have anything to do by the book of Revelation chapter 6, that the heavens will roll back like a scroll. I am working on that. That's a work in progress as I'm speaking to you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. I'm seeing a connection. It's amazing. It is amazing. Here we go, church. The place where judgment comes out of Daniel 7 and 9, it was the chariot throne of fire. Out of the right hand of God went forth a fiery stream, which was the law. Revelations 4 and 1, John is called up into heaven like a trumpet. Come up hither. John goes up to heaven. To me, it is a symbol that represents the church that is caught up in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17. Called home by a voice that sounds like a trumpet. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can't wait for that day. Can you, church? All of this happens according to scripture after Jesus is dealing with the seven churches because five are fallen and we know that judgment will begin first in the house of God. There's only two found worthy to escape, to not, that are kept from the temptation that will come upon the whole world. De Jesus is dealing with five of the churches because five are fallen. And they're being seduced by seducing spirits and false doctrines of devils. So therefore, Jesus is there in the midst of them to warn them of the coming judgment. The catching away, caught up, happens before the wrath of God in Revelation chapter 6, before the great judgment on earth. John was in heaven looking down on the earth. He is in the spirit. He is in the spiritual realm of God. Revelation 1 and 10, and then also in the book of Revelation chapter 4, we see that John is caught up in the spirit. Immediately, I was in the spirit. So to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So where the body, John does not know where his body is, just like the apostle Paul. Don't forget in 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 4, Paul is caught up into the third heaven. And just like John, they are describing themselves in the spirit because Paul does not know whether he is in the body or out of the body. He said only God knows that answer. Every time I've gone in visions and even in dreams, I, I never really actually in the visions ever get to see the form that I'm in. I know I have one because people are staring at me in heaven. Every time I've gone into heaven, they are looking at me, and I always ask the Holy Spirit, when they see me, what do they see? He said, you are who you are. I said, so they know I'm Donna. He didn't say they knew I was Donna, but that they knew me. So whoever the true being of me is in heaven, they knew me. It's amazing. Every time I'm caught up into heaven, I, I, I know how those that went before me felt. You don't want to leave. And then when you're brought back here to the earth, 
Oh, man, the disappointment of knowing that you're back here. And I always beg the Holy Spirit, let me stay. Let me stay. But he never lets me stay. And I have no power to stay or to go. I go as the Spirit leads me. But I want to stay. I always think I'm going to grab a hold of something the next time I get there so I don't have to be brought back here. But then the Holy Spirit of God reminds me, your work is not finished yet. But the day will come, you will be here, and you'll never leave. I said, Amen, Lord. Amen. I want to stay in this beautiful place. And John is describing himself also, that he knows that he is not in the body. He said he is in the spirit. The throne of God, the seat of power and great authority. There is a throne in heaven, a supreme ruler. The throne is not empty. Because Revelation 22 and 1 tells us that the throne of God and the throne of the Lamb, so we know who is sitting upon that throne, is God and the Lamb of God, a heavenly throne, the glory of God, the sapphire stone, and the sardis stone. I know that these two stones are the first and the last stone in the breastplate of the high priest in the book of Exodus 39, 8 through 13. The 24 elders in heaven definitely are the priest because we know that the 12 tribes and the 12 apostles are the faithful. So those in heaven that are crowned have never seen, I have never seen, an angel crowned. Only the believers, the faithful, are crowned. But we do know that some of the angels are clothed in white robes. I have seen that in enough of visions. I have seen that they will also wear white robes. When I saw the angel Gabriel, he was wearing a white robe. Whether he was martyred or not, I don't know. But I know that he was wearing white, which is the righteousness of the saints. And we know that the righteous do wear white white robes. We know that by the book of Revelation 7 and 9. Here we go church. From the throne proceeds lightning, thundering, and voice. This is those that communicate with the throne of God. Light speaks to light. Spirit speaks to spirit. God speaks to his creation and it speaks back to God. Exodus nineteen sixteen through 19. It is a fearful sight to behold the throne of judgment. Can you imagine that lightning, thundering, and voices and seven lamps of fire were burning before it, which are the seven spirits of God. Can you imagine what all of those saw when they went into the throne of God. Those that came out of the great tribulation are before the throne of God in the temple of God. Revelation 4 and 1 tells us that there is a sea of glass before the throne of God. Which I know by the power of the Holy Ghost is the temple of God. Don't forget in the book of Acts 15, 15 and 16 when Jesus returns he will rebuild and restore the temple of God, the sea of glass, the water before the throne, the washing of water of the word, Ephesians 5 and 26. We can know nothing of the future events. Only by what God is pleased to reveal to us through his precious Holy Spirit of God. The mysteries of God are behind the veil of the flesh of Jesus Christ. And until God opens the door to be caught up into the third heaven. But what you might not know, to be caught up in the spirit. The body has to be in a time suspended. Even when the angel Gabriel stood beside my bed uh, to take me into outer darkness. I'm standing there beside him looking at my body. And I even asked the angel, am I dead? And he says, no, you're asleep. I said, I look dead. You're not dead. You're asleep. Your body is just 
suspended there. And you're just looking at it. I'm telling you, that was some something strange when I had to look at my body. And I'm outside of my body looking at my body. And thinking that I'm dead. What you might not know is to be caught up in that spirit. That body has to be suspended somewhere. And truly asleep. Because you know when we sleep, sleep is a type of death. And we know that the word tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And truly I believe this by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. That when we sleep at night uh, and our body changes over and it starts dreaming. Uh, that God has to... Uh, take us into the presence of God. And that's why we see in the book of Job, that's where he uh, speaks to us in dreams and visions and uh, when we're in deep sleep. So he can seal our instructions because we have to keep going back into the presence of God because as a redeemed soul and a born again spirit, that's where we get our strength is in the presence of God. We can't be away from him too long. So the Holy Spirit of God said to me one day, he said, when you sleep, it is a type of death. I said, so we're dead? No, you're not dead, but it is a type of death to be asleep. It is the time that the redeemed and the born again has to go back into the presence of God. I said, that's some stuff right there. That is amazing. And we don't even know we went. We really don't. We don't even have a memory of going into the presence of God, but we did. We went into his presence. It's amazing, the work of God. It truly is, and it is worth searching out. The spirit of John had the spirit of prophecy. Revelations 19 and 10, under the influence of the Holy Spirit of God, the spirit of prophecy foretelling the future prepares the nations and the people, revealing the signs of the times and the seasons, truly what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Revelation 19 and 10, the testimony of Jesus Christ, they are witnesses. Revelation 22, 8 and 9, the witnesses, Hebrews 12 and 1, the witnesses of Jesus Christ, those who are persecuted and killed. Since the temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed, has prophecy been taken from the prophets? and even given to the children. Even the Holy Spirit of God has asked me enough of times, is there a prophet in Israel? I said, my Lord, I do not know. I do know that there will be false prophets in the book of Revelation 12, 1 through 4. I also know by Revelations 13 and 13, a false prophet will appear to deceive the people that he is Elijah, making fire come down out of heaven. I do know that in the great tribulation there will be two witnesses in Revelation 11 and 3. They are witnesses because they have seen Jesus Christ. I said to the Holy Spirit of God, if they be Moses and Elijah, then they have saw Jesus Christ on the mountain of transfiguration in Matthew 17, 1 through 3. They have the testimony of Jesus Christ. These two have all the bases covered. They are two witnesses. They are prophets. They will prophesy. They are two candlesticks, two churches, Revelations 1 and 20, two olive trees. The witnesses, Revelation 1 and 2, they'll bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelations 11 and 4 tells us that these two olive trees, they stand before the Lord of the earth, Zechariah 4 and 14. The olive oil, is used for the lamps. We know that by the book of Exodus. We know that by Zechariah 4 and 6. It is the spirit of the Lord. Matthew 25, 1 through 4. I tell you the truth. The two witnesses are lamps full of oil. Full of the Holy Ghost. And he will empower them in the great tribulation. To shine the light of God. Into a dark world. The plan of Satan is to stop all prophecy. Today in the house of God, the gift of the spirit of prophecy has been removed. God reveals himself to his children so they can understand 
and received a deeper understanding of who he is. We know God through his word. I tell you the truth, church. God does not only want you to know him through his word, but he wants you to know him by encountering him, by being in his presence. I tell you the truth that this generation, we are tired of just studying the word of God. We want to know God. Right now, too many of the church is feeling far off. Looking through a glass darkly. Let us encounter God. It's time that we go boldly into the presence of God. I have beheld the smoke of his glory. I have felt the house shaken from the presence of the Holy Ghost. I have seen gold falling from heaven. As in slow motion. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And then a mighty wind blew that dust of that gold. And I shut my eyes and the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me. No, my friend, open your eyes. And I opened my eyes as the wind, Lord, don't let me cry, blew that gold into my face and as it were slow motion. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I'm telling you the true church. And I have smelt the sweetest perfume of the Holy Spirit, the sweetest taste of the fragrance of the Spirit of God, the anointing of God, where it's just a multitude of the sweetest flowers that are so sweet to the taste. Oh, taste and see that God is good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I know God is speaking. Let us go through the veil of the flesh of Jesus Christ into the presence of God, into his holy presence. He is calling us into this fellowship that we are to no longer stand far off away from God to only know God through his word. God wants that fellowship with you. He wants that personal walk with you. He wants to meet with you. That's the reason why the veil of the old temple was rent when Jesus rose from the grave. It was a place that men had to go through priests to go into the presence of God. God wants that fellowship with you, church. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants you to experience him. He wants you to taste the sweetness of his holy presence. He wants you to come boldly to the throne of grace, Hebrews 4 and 16. In time of need, in time of help, we can go boldly. God is still sitting on the throne of grace and mercy. What are we waiting for? Our high priest is there, waiting on us to enter into his rest. The truth, the way of life, Jesus Christ who made new. Right now, within the veil of the flesh of Jesus, through the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, you and I can go boldly to the throne of God. I tell you the truth, prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus Christ, uncovers, reveals the hidden mysteries of God, even the mystery of the future. Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing but revealeth his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. The secret things belong to the Lord God. But I tell you this, those things revealed belong to us, the children of God, that we may do all the words of the law. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Everything is revealed to us by the power of the Holy Ghost, and I call him my best friend. And we will keep everything that he reveals to us forever. I know I will never, ever forget anything. What the Holy Spirit gives to me, dreams, visions, prophecy, revelation, knowledge. This is my spiritual inheritance. My treasure in heaven. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 and 2. I tell you the truth. And I hope and pray you're listening to me. 
until you, until you, church, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts and prophecy and speaking in tongues, speaking to God in the Spirit, and God will speak to you, speaking mysteries. The spiritual realm of the anointing. Prophecy, realm of the Spirit. Matthew 4, 15 and 16. Those that sat in darkness and under the shadow of death, the Gentiles saw great light. Acts 2, 25 through 31, Jesus went into hell and they saw great light. In the days of the darkness that is coming from the kingdom of the beast, it will be full of darkness. The Gentiles will possess the temple of the outer court and trample Jerusalem under their feet. Luke 21, 20 through 24. These be the days of the devil's wrath, knowing that his time is short. Revelation 12 and 14 and 17, the woman's seed. Because the devil is angry with Jerusalem and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, those that keep the commandment, those that have the right to enter through the city and right to the tree of life. Revelation 22 and 14. The remnant, Jerusalem 31, I'm sorry, Jeremiah 31 and 2. The people that are left of the sword, the people of the children of Israel that's left of the sword will find grace in the wilderness, the favor of God. They have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy, and they will prophesy. Truly, the days of the prophets will return to Israel. I tell you the truth, my dear, dear, precious friends, until we pursue the gifts of the Spirit, till we pursue love, we truly will not come into that spiritual inheritance that God wants you to have. The gifts of the Spirit. The things of the Spirit. God is waiting for us. We don't have to go into a building and wait for a priest to make a sacrifice and to make sure he cleaned his own self before he can go into the presence of God on our behalf. We have that high priest who was made after the order of Melchizedek. He is a priest forever. And he has already consecrated the way by his precious blood. So you and I can go boldly into the presence of God. What are we waiting for? Let us go in time of need, in time of help, to the throne of grace and mercy. God is waiting there. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to walk with you. He wants to talk with you. He wants to reveal himself to you. Everything that the Holy Spirit of God has revealed to me in revelation, knowledge, and dreams, and visions, he always says to me, my friend, this is so that you will know God. He wants you to know him, to know his thinking, his plan, the reason why he has done what he has done. He wants you to know. He wants you to understand. To come into that revelation knowledge and know the mysteries of God. And church, I tell you what. Everything the Holy Spirit of God has given to me, I will never ever forget it as long as I live. My walk with God, Lord, don't let me cry. I would not trade or give up for anything in this world. It has been an amazing walk. And I will continue to walk with God all the days of my life because I love Him with everything that is in me. I love Him. 
everything that I have received, every word, revelation, knowledge I have received has been through the Holy Spirit of God. My dear, dear, precious friend. And he always says to me, we're not just friends, Donna. You and I are the best of friends. I always say, yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord, we are the best of friends. I love him, church. I do. I'm in this for love. I love him with everything that's in me. I can truly say that I've never, ever in my entire life ever loved anything or anyone more than I do him in this word. But now let's go into the presence of God and have fellowship with our Father, the one that created us, the one that formed us, the one that called us from our mother's womb, that called us by name. Amen. Church, I'm going to have to copy Brother Larry. If I don't see you soon, church, I'll see you on the other side. I certainly will see you at the Lord's table. Have a blessed and victorious day today. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray. And let the church say amen and amen. Church, I go into the presence of God daily. I enter my closet. I'll lay on my floor before God. I bow before him every day. I give him honor, glory, worship, and praise because he's worthy. Not because I have to. Not because it's a repetition. Not because it's a religious ceremony that's something that I have to do. No. It's an honor to go into the presence of God and to worship him, bow before him. We serve a mighty God. Many, many years ago, the Holy Spirit of God said to me, my friend, all over the world are those that bow down and serve and worship false gods. And I said, yes, my Lord, this is true. He said, where are my people? Where are my people? Where are those that will bow down and worship God in spirit and in truth? I said, right here, my Lord. Right here, my Lord. Here I am. I will do it. Worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, don't let me cry. When the Holy Spirit of God is moving in that anointing, it just makes me cry. Because he is so sweet, isn't he? He is just so sweet and dear to my soul and my spirit. I love him. I love you, Lord. I love you. Church, when I get into heaven, I'm probably going to be doing a whole lot of crying. Because I'm just going to be so happy to be there. I'm going to fall out on them streets of gold. I'm going to be running like they called my name on the Price is Right. I'm going to be running and screaming. And I'll be saying, where is my Jesus? I want to see Jesus. Let me see my Lord. What a day that will be. What a day that will be. Then I'm going to grab a hold of him. And he's going to have to drag me all over heaven. I'm never going to let him go. I will be the one at the feet of Jesus every day. I love him, church. I love him with everything that is in me. I see you there. I see you at the feet of Jesus. Have a blessed day, my dear, precious friends. I love you dearly, and I appreciate you more than words can say. You are always on my heart and in my prayers. Keep me in yours also. Have a blessed day, church. Have a blessed day, my dear, precious friends.